kind of like you're having a party and you have a buffet and you can't control who comes to the party, but everybody gets plenty of food. Hi, my name is Danielle Vitiello. I'm the medical director at Fertility Centers of New England, which is a first fertility company. The medications are, uh, that are associated with IVF are just hormones, and they're the same hormones that our body makes, just more. So when I talk to patients, I say it's kind of like you're having a party and you have a buffet and you can't control who comes to the party, but everybody gets plenty of food. So the uh, major medication is called follicle stimulating hormone and it's under a couple of brand names. It's Coke or Pepsi, but it's kind of the same thing. And so that medication is follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and it's the same hormone that the brain makes to stimulate the one out of 300 follicles or eggs that are present in a normal cycle. So you can imagine when you have a lot more food, you can actually recruit some of those follicles and eggs within and that's what makes IVF efficient because of those 200 or 300 follicles and eggs that exist, we can call upon not only the dominant follicle, but many of its friends. So in fact, when, when women go through an IVF cycle, they're really trying to capture some of those eggs that would have been wasted. One of the concerns is that women will go through menopause earlier, but it's not the case. We're just trying to capture the dominant follicle and as many as their friends that'll come to the party. So the major player is follicle-stimulating hormone that stimulates the ovaries. Sometimes we sweeten these protocols with another medication called luteinizing hormone, and it's the second hormone that the brain makes. So we start with follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, to stimulate the follicles. And then when the follicles are accepting um, of luteinizing hormone as in a natural cycle, we'll often add that second. So women will go from often one injection to two injections a day. And what's happening is the follicles, which house the eggs, are starting to grow. And as they get larger, they get a little bit more excited and they release estradiol, which is another hormone. And that estradiol leaches through the ovaries into the blood vessels and back to the brain. And it really is just a conversation between the brain and the ovary and the ovary and the brain. And it's an allowance of telling us how all is developing. In a natural cycle, when the estradiol level reaches a certain level, the brain says, ah, the egg is mature and it's trying to ovulate. But in these IVF cycles, you can imagine a lot of the follicles are making the same hormone and that's all traveling back to the brain as one sentinel or one marker. So that level is gonna be elevated even though the follicle and the egg isn't ready. So we have to figure out a way to control the cycle. We have to figure out a way to unlink stimulation of the ovaries and the eggs from how the body responds. So there was one medication, and then there became two medications, and now there's a third. And that third medication often used is called an antagonist. And simply what that does is put glue in the lock of your brain so your body can't see that hormone level which would naturally stimulate ovulation. So you have one shot a day, and then often two shots a day, and sometimes three. Now sometimes these medications can be given twice a day, so it's really more related to one medication or one hormone and the second hormone, and then the third. Dinner and dessert for the ovaries and then to block that signal. Now when the follicles reach a size, we think the eggs are mature because we can't see the eggs by ultrasound, but we can see the follicle size. It's a big balloon circle, if you will, in the ovary, and ultrasound measures the difference in density, so we can see those follicles readily. So now it's time to trigger ovulation. And so then we trigger ovulation either using a natural hormone called luteinizing hormone, or we use HCG, which is pregnancy hormone, because it acts like the stimulation. And so when one takes that medication, they're about ready for the retrieval about 36 hours later. That cycle takes anywhere from 10 days to 14 days. But the most important part is really to target the cycle according to the growth of the follicles. Sometimes they're a little bit slower and sometimes they're faster. And so that's why we do monitoring with ultrasound and blood work really to, 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 uh, to optimize the cycle and really cater it to what the needs are of the ovary.